We talk about black people and their resisting taking this vaccine. We mention things about past experiences that blacks have had that kind of makes them question, not just jumping on a bandwagon because somebody says it's going to benefit you. We have a history of knowing that that necessarily doesn't have to be the case. And so when we talk about all of the people that are dying, blacks a disproportionately amount, and it's for reasons that they have not had the proper health care to keep them at least healthy enough to be above that vulnerability. See, they've been denied that. And so when this virus come upon them and you start talking about a vaccine, yes, they would love to have a vaccine, but they don't know whether you're trying to test them for some other reason, some other purpose. They can't trust you. And you say, well, it's about trusting or dying. Well, if you were worth uh, being trusted, then <clears throat> you would do those kinds of things that would allow black people to trust you. I mean, you know, you can't be having cops killing black people or the, the, the economic system causing people to be on food stamps or unemployed or having these vices that's working against them and say you love them or you care about them or that they should trust you. How should they trust you when they're sleeping in the tents in the cold? They know you don't care. You'll do anything. They know that. Now, they might be uh, people who say, well, I'm going to take a chance. Well, they take a chance. And sometimes in most instances, thank God, that it is not, I don't guess, uh, uh, an experiment with them. You know, I've had some boosters, I believe, when I was a kid. I must admit right now, I'm afraid of uh, your medication. I'm afraid because I know for a fact, I know for a good old fact, that for the most part, and I'm not saying that the doctors don't care. I'm not saying that. But for the most part, the emphasis is not on caring. The emphasis is on using caring to making money. And so, yes, black people are very suspicious. Also, as I make this statement, I also hear a lot of people talking about Black people want white people to treat them and respect them in a certain fashion when they themselves won't treat themselves in a certain fashion. Well, I want you to know, whoever are making these, uh, qu these quips, I want you to know this. Even if they did the way the white man does, or even if they did the way you think that would be proper, they stopped killing each other. If, even if they stopped doing that, it would have to, the pain and suffering is caused by a system that's misdirected, would, call, would be expressed in some other fashion. So there's no way you can find your way getting out of this. Because as long as you are doing the kinds of things in life that rejects the plan of life, when it rejects the, the plan of peace, it rejects the plan of prosperity, it rejects the plan of freedom, it rejects the plan of dreams coming true. As long as you're dealing with a system that does that, what do you expect? If it's not this, it's going to be that. It's all going to be some pain and suffering until you deal with it. And you're not going to deal with it until you realize that you do not have the way. What I mean by that? I mean that if your way is leaving somebody out, it's because it's absent the spirit of God. It's absent the spirit of love. And so in order for it to happen, in order for you to see it, in order for you to see it for everybody, it got to be infused with the spirit of God. The spirit of love got to be in there. Otherwise, you're going to see whites only, Mexicans only, blacks only, old people only, young people only. You're going to find something, but not with God. It's everybody. All right. I just thought I'd, I thought I'd say that. Yeah. That's why we're suspicious. You won't do the right thing. Goodbye.